Hello friends, my name is Marines and today I'll be ranking all of the heroines that I read in young adult literature in 2016. <laughs> fun way to talk about a bunch of the things that I read this year and it's all based on personal opinion and just kind of how I related to these different categories. So for instance we're going to be talking about heroines, YA heroines here and a lot of times I'm going to be talking not only about how they're written, it's not necessarily all about skill but about how I related to them as a character personally. So you guys get to hear a little bit more about my preferences. Number 18 and my least favorite character that I read for the entire year was Bella Swan from the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer. Twilight is a paranormal series about a young girl who falls in love with a vampire and has a werewolf for a best friend. In 2016 I read books two and three in the series which were New Moon and Eclipse. This series is really like in general it's just a throwdown of who can be the worst character. Not only is she a terrible narrator because she never realizes like when she's breathing or where she's going going or what's happening. Either that or she's at the other end of the spectrum where she's like sleeping and still noticing things and hearing conversations somehow. Not only is she a terrible narrator but she's also a terrible person. She cares about literally no one besides herself and her boyfriend and it happened a couple of times in these last two books where people are telling her like really serious stories. One is about a gang rape, one is about like the traditions and legends of the native people that get totally appropriated in the series but that's a different story and both times she ends like she listens to the story and then thinks about how her whiny first world white girl problems fit into what the person is saying like oh this happened to you let me talk about my own problems and she's just the worst. Number 17 is Feyre from the A Court of Thorns and Roses series which I read A Court of Mist and Fury in 2016. Mostly read. Akatar, which is the first book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling set in a fantasy world and that really starts the story of Feyre in that book and it continues on in the series in ways that I guess are spoilery if you think this book actually has a plot. After reading Akamath, the second book, I'm not really sure that I like Feyre more or less than I did originally. She's dealing with a lot of things this go around, including an abusive relationship, like explicitly abusive as opposed to the like hot abusive that the other leg in the triangle is, but like explicitly abusive relationship and some PTSD. But if you thought that Mass would handle that with any kind of style or grace then ha ha ha. Instead she handles it in a completely unnuanced way and uses both of those things, both her PTSD and her abusive relationship to push her into the arms of the second leg of the love triangle because that's really what it's all about ladies am I right? I guess I don't dislike Feyre as much as I did last year when I read the first book and she was just kind of a fool running around in a dangerous land but I also don't enjoy spending ending any amount of time in her head. Number 16 is Lucia from the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. Fallen Kingdoms is a story that follows four perspectives and they are all people characters that come from feuding kingdoms. This year I read the second book Rebel Spring and all of the vague feelings that I had about Lucia in the first book really solidified in the second book because she is clueless. I'm not really sure that this was a conscious choice by the the author but it really reads like that Lucia is so powerful that the only only thing really keeping her in check is her own stupidity. Number 15 is Cleo also from the Fallen Kingdom series. Last year I had her ranked way higher than this but in Rebel Spring she had nothing to do. Honestly, I have no idea what she did for 400 pages besides suffer and fake smile a lot. Number 14 is Sophie from the School of Good and Evil by Soman Chainani. This is also a series but I've only read the first book. In the story two best friends Sophie and Agatha get taken away to be in the school for good and evil but Sophie thinks she's going to be good and Agatha thinks she's going to be evil but those roles are switched on them and they have a hard time dealing with that. Sophie is low on this list but I should clarify that it's for instant 
story reasons. As opposed to like hating Bella, for instance, I love to hate Sophie. I became so passionate about her while reading because there were times that against my better judgment, she'd made me root for her only to turn around and do something else that was really messed up. So it became this like love hate thing that was really well done, I think, especially here in this first book. She's selfish and self involved from the very beginning of the story. But it's amazing how much that progresses as you read along and for a story that really blurs the lines between good and evil. It's amazing how many of the characteristics of Sophie's personality you get to know th by the end that you're like, hmm, that's pretty damn evil. Number 13 is Meche from Signal to Noise by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Signal to Noise is a YA magical realism story about a group of friends that realize that they can harness the power of music to make certain things happen. I loved this book and let's just take a moment to realize how amazing that is because Meche, who's one of the main characters, is a pain in the ass. But it's a stubbornness that really fits in with the experience of growing up and of being like a teenager. It's all of these big and mysterious emotions that are pulling her in different directions and she is a stubborn character in the face of that. So it creates this, this combination where it's really tough to root for her at times and yet the story is so well done. I love that Medja is who she is unapologetically but again just compared to some of these other characters she was not my fave. Number 12 is Alex from Labyrinth Lost by Soraida Cordova. This is a fantasy story about a super powerful witch who doesn't want her powers and in an attempt to get rid of them she accidentally gets rid of her whole family. It kind of hurts me to put Alex so low down on this list but she saw in her story the way that the rest of the story suffered for me in that it wasn't developed enough. She's kind of indistinguishable from other YA heroines and her character just doesn't progress very much further from powerful person who doesn't want her powers. In her own story, Alex is overshadowed by pretty much everyone else and I felt zero connection to her voice. Number 11 is Katie from Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. This is a sci-fi story about an attack on a planet by a corporation and then the attempt to escape and the mad dash to figure out what the heck is going on. Katie is here in my rankings because unfortunately I felt very similarly about her as I did about Alex in that I just was disconnected from their voice in the story. The format of Illuminae makes it really entertaining to read but unfortunately for me because of the way that the story is laid out it created this wall of separation for me and the characters at least emotionally. There were specific times where things happened that gave me feelings about Katie and I did love how she was super capable and she was running all over the ship and owning those computer systems but in all she's kind of landing here in the middle of the list because I didn't have enough of an investment in her as a character. Number 10 is Lilac from These Broken Stars also by Amy Kaufman with Megan Spooner. This is another sci-fi story and in this one there is a crash of a spaceship and only two people survive on this mysterious planet. Lilac is one of them, Tarver is the boy who is with her and they kind of have to figure out where they are and try to get help or else survive. I went back and forth on Lilac and she is this person who is very well off and she's been raised in this like bubble probably made of money for all of her life. When she crashes on this planet she does her best to act tough and to keep up with Tarver who is a soldier. Lilac really does her best to hold her own in the situation that she's in. On the one hand like you go girl because honestly if I were in that situation I would be crying the whole time or yelling like carry me while walking through the forest. On the other hand there were a thousand percent times where she wasn't trying to survive, she was being stubborn. I think that stubbornness went on until exactly the right point. Like I literally had just turned to my friend who lent me the book to read and was like I'm getting sick of lilac and at that point was exactly when something changed in her in her and in their dynamic. Her poor little rich girl problems might be too much for some people but in general she was not the worst see previous entries on this list. Number nine is Sierra Santiago from Shadow Shaper by Daniel Jose Older. This is an urban fantasy about a group of people who have the ability to transfer spirits into art. It's also a pretty short book and I felt like I didn't have enough time to really sink my teeth into Sierra as a character but what we are shown throughout the story is super promising. Here is this girl who gets thrown into kind of that typical surprise power kind of story and she 
she is inventive and she is brave and she's sassy. She meets every one of the challenges with this kind of sass and personality that I really enjoyed reading about. And my only real complaint is that I wish I had had more time with her as a character. Number eight is Skybright from Serpentine by Cindy Pon. Serpentine is the story in the first book in a series. I've only read the first book, but it's about a girl who finds out that surprise, she's half girl, half snake. I really enjoyed Skybright as a character and I really enjoyed that this story was all about her figuring out who she is. I really enjoyed going on that journey with her because she's such a gathered and mature character and she's also very very loyal and there is a female friendship at the heart of this story as well. Even though my heart was breaking for Skybright at times and I wanted her to kind of shake off the confines of everything that had been placed on her, it was still really satisfying and really amazing to see see her loyalty and her friendship with with this person. Number seven is Blue from The Raven Cycle. I have only read the first two books in the series, The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves. The most bad that I can say about Blue so far is that I just haven't had enough of her in these first two books. As much as I enjoy The Raven Boys, it is Blue's straight man to their characters that ties me to the story the most. The fact that I can call Blue a straight man even though she's brought up by a family of psychics and amplifies their power tells you what kind of story this is. I love Blue's calm demeanor even though she's kind of repeatedly struggling against the idea that she's very practical but she is. It's mentioned by the other characters that she kind of ingrains herself into them and she's the glue that holds them together very quickly because she has that air of just you know evenness and practicality and caring to her. Even as a character and I do understand that she's a character and not a real person but she's got this kind of like magical aura about her even as she is almost the straight man in this group of friends. She's got this very pleasing aura to her as a character. Number six is Lace from The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a magical realism story about two feuding families. I think in the story McLemore does a really good job of balancing between real and magical and she mostly does this through her characters. I enjoyed Lace and I thought she was very easy to relate to and to root for. In her family of almost literal mermaids we see her struggling with very real problems including insecure and her place within that very family and there are body issue things and just comments that are made against her by her own family that she has to kind of deal with. Lace is very determined though and she is also very brave and caring. She ends up in a place where she's around all new characters and she very quickly gains their trust and kind of meshes in with them. So in a lot of ways she's very blue-like in that fashion in that she is got such a caring and good soul that it's easy for her to kind of mesh into other places. Even when she was dealing with the prejudices that she learned from her family, you can really see her struggling against them and it really made my heart go out to her. Number five is Nina from Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I struggled at times with the pace of this fantasy story about a heist, but primarily because it was sold to me as about a heist and I really don't think it is. I think it is more about the characters in the group that ultimately try to pull off this heist. Nina is a part of the dregs and she's just one of those characters that is is everything I probably wish I were. She is bold and confident and powerful and under this exterior of having none of your shit she is incredibly selfless which we see in an actual act within the story and she's also just an amazing person to have on your side in general. The dialogue throughout the book is amazing. It's one of my favorite things in a book that I kind of struggled with in points but it's amazing. The dialogue is great and so many of the best lines come via Nina's wit and sarcasm. A lot of that applies to my number four pick who is Inej also from of crows. If Nina is a bit of everything I want to be, maybe Inej is a little bit more of what I am. I mean, I'm probably just saying that because she's quiet. She's also incredibly stealthy and I am absolutely not. One of the things that put an edge above Nina for me is that I loved her unwavering belief in something. In the book her nickname is Waif but I think it's almost ironic because there's something about an edge's character that is very solid at the core of her. She may be able to disappear and like kind of hide so that people don't see her but her as a character has a very like strong core. She believes what she believes and she is committed to these things and she's very unwavering on that front. My love for her is part of the reason I haven't read Crooked Kingdom because 
of the way that the first book ends. I'm scared. Number three is Sophie from How's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. It is a fantasy novel about a girl who gets a curse placed on her and she goes to find this magician, this wizard, Howell, and he is kind of a jerk. I love Sophie so very much, primarily for the way that she handles the curse being put on her. She gets turned into an old woman and she almost uses this as a costume, as an avenue to be able to really free herself in a way that she probably wouldn't have been able to had she stayed in her regular life and kind of the predetermined roles that she was made to live in. I love that she doesn't take house crap. She does the cleaning and the mending and she does whatever she thinks is right, regardless of whatever moods he's in or whatever he says it should happen. Sophie's gonna be an old lady but she's going to be the crotchetiest old lady that there is and she's going to live with Hal but it's going to be partially on her own terms and for that I very much adore this character. Number two is Agatha from the School of Good and Evil by Somin Chenani. Now I've heard mixed things about this series as it goes on and as I mentioned I've only read the first book and a lot of the reason why I enjoyed this first book is because of Agatha. Because of the way that Agatha looks and the way that she was brought up she has this mentality about who she is and why she gets picked for the school of good and evil and all of that turns out to be exactly the opposite of what she expected and so she has to kind of like retrain herself to this new idea of who she is. She is kind of quintessentially the good character type that we would imagine but only in her characters, in her presentation, in the things that she finds funny, in the people that she picks as friends. All of that is kind of non-traditional of what you would expect the good character to be and that's exactly what Chainani is playing with in this whole story. So that combination of just kind of crass but also good really endeared me to Agatha and I loved her for continually trying and continually giving people second chances and just doing her very best. Number one for the second year running is September from the Fairyland series and this is the last year that she'll be eligible because there will be no more entries into the Fairyland series and this was the last one that I picked up in 2016 so two years running but never again whether that's good or bad news. I love September Morning Bell so very much. She is one of my favorite characters of all time. Here is this little girl who starts the series at 12 years old and finishes it in the last book at 17. She is a professional revolutionary and an engineer in her own right. An almost kind of twist on the traditional. So if you look at somebody like Lucy Penvency who is just all goodness and pureness and I love Lucy but September is, a, is very much not in that mold. She she makes big sacrifices for her friends and for fairyland and she is forced a lot of times to do these things alone and to make decisions based on what she knows and just kind of put herself out there with bravery and with courage and to take the things that were seen as negative about her personality and kind of spin that on its head and turn it into something that ultimately saves fairyland. She's got to make these decisions and she's got to deal with the consequences and things are never very simple or very pretty for our September, but she never gives up. And so she tops my list once again. That's it for me today. You can tell me down in the comments how you felt about some of these characters or also what were some of your favorite YA heroines in 2016. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon.